Amen. Let us all be、um, standing up in this moment in reverence to the word of the Lord. We're going to open in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. Amen. The word of the Lord says the following. It's also up at the front screen, whoever wants to read along. Now the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Glory to God. Amen. Everyone can be seated. This、um, passage in the Bible, it was a moment in which a youth, a teenager, he was called Samuel, he had his first experience with God. And the story of Samuel is very interesting because he was born and he was the fruit of prayer. He was the fruit of a promise from God because a servant of the Lord called Hannah. His mother. She couldn't have children. And so she prayed to God. She seeked God with tears because she desired so greatly to have kids and to, to have Samuel. So Samuel, he was born already as a blessing, as a fruit of Hannah's dedication and prayer. And Samuel, he grows, he turns into a youth and a young adult. And Hannah, she had made a promise to God. She said, Look, God, if I have a son, I am going to offer him to you. I want, I, I want the happiness to have a son and to have a son, but I want to give him to you. And she did that. That was her prayer. And when he, Samuel was born, that's exactly what she did. So when Samuel was born, Hannah、um, brought Samuel to the temple and He, she brought Samuel to、um, the priest, the high priest Eli. And in Eli was the one who was instructing Samuel during this time. He taught Samuel how to serve God, how to properly do the work in his house. And in this time, Israel, where they lived, it wasn't a very good time. Today, the Holy Spirit is poured out over all the church of all men. But at that time, the church was driven through the voice of the Lord that came through the, pop, the prophets, which at that time was Eli. However, the word says that there wasn't visions, God, He would speak, but the prophet, which was Eli, He no longer heard what God was saying. He didn't want to listen to God. So during this moment, he had, this, he had his spiritual life growing cold and growing old. And Israel at that time needed direction from a prophet so that the people of God could go on the path and drive forward in his path. But during this time, Israel. Was under prejudice. They were going through struggles because Eli, the high priest, wasn't giving ears to God. His family was destroyed. His home was destroyed. His sons, they would blaspheme and they would、um, ruin the things, the sacrifices that were supposed to be given to God. They didn't have any respect for anything that was prophetic. They would eat. The foods that were supposed to be sacrificed to God, which was terrible in God's eyes. They no longer respected what God was saying. Whatever the prophet would bring, they didn't respect this no longer. They didn't respect the teachings that they had learned from their father ever since they were children. And we know of one thing, brethren it is terrible when a man. 
he no longer wants to hear the, the voice of the Lord. And Israel, as the chosen nation from God, we see during、um, Israel's whole history that God has never abandoned them. But Israel so many times abandoned God and what he had to say. And every time that Israel would distance themselves from God, like we see in this text, there would come the consequences, there would come the, the struggles and the dis,、um, disappointments. And Eli's ministry, was, Eli's ministry was a ministry that was coming to an end. Because the lamp, the word of the Lord, comes to Samuel, and God makes sure that He tells Samuel that before the lamp of God was completely out, He told Samuel something needed to happen. And in one home, there was a lamp that was going, burning out. And the reason why this lamp was burning out was because God showed a woman. Who brought a lot of things into her house. Spiritually speaking, the house is our heart. And when a man, he no longer hears the voice of the Lord, he wants to instead hear what the world is saying, the consequences, spiritual consequences, come. The lamp, what does it speak of? It speaks of the revelation, it speaks of the direction of the Holy Spirit. And in this vision, which is what we're talking about,、um, of this lady, they no longer wanted to hear what God was saying. They wanted to instead go within their own reasoning and their own、um, understanding, and the lamp was going to go out this way. And in a, in, a, in a vision, God showed that there was a woman. She w- grew up in the gospel. She grew up in the work of the Lord, in his project, in the church. She knows the path. She knows the truth. But she has given ears to many other voices that aren't the voices of God. She's been giving too, many, too much attention to her friends, what the internet says. And God showed that whenever she would do this, she would get. Farther from God's path. She would distance herself from God. And Eli's situation was exactly this the lamp was burning out. There w a s no more visions. God's voice was no longer driving Eli's ministry. And bringing this to today's days, the world is saying a lot of things TV, the internet, our friendships. It's not that we have to completely ignore everything else, but what has to drive our lives is the direction of the Holy Spirit of God. What has to govern our lives is God. The one who has to govern our path, our posture, our walk is only the voice of God. And those of us who have discernment, we're going to know His voice because we are sheep. We are sheep of、um, the pastor and we, we know the voice of our pastor, of our shepherd. And the church today, we know the voice of the one who has called us for this work. We know God, we know the God in which we serve. We have experiences with him. And so we recognize his voice just like sheep recognize the shepherd's voice. This is the work that was made in our hearts. And Samuel is t-、um, represents the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that was born through prayer, through a promise from God. And Hannah, she offered Samuel to God because the work does not belong to us, but it belongs to God. And what we have to do is we have to give our lives for this project that isn't ours, but is God's. And Samuel, he was born in the middle of all of this, in the middle of this situation. And Samuel, he goes to the temple. And what's interesting is that right when the lamp was about to go out, there was no longer hope in the, in the country of Israel. It was nighttime, and Samuel was going to sleep. But God spoke to Samuel, the, cho-、uh, the chosen one of that time. He, he tried to talk to Samuel, not once, not twice, but three times. And he, Samuel thought it was Eli speaking. 
because God was saying, Samuel, Samuel. And so Samuel would go to Eli, Eli, why are you calling me? And he, had, he was so confused. And Eli said to Samuel, Samuel, it is not me that is calling you. And Samuel went back to sleep. And Samuel didn't have any experiences with God at the time. And Eli, for an instance, he had a revelation from God. And he said to Samuel, Samuel, when you go to sleep again and you hear this voice, you're going to say, you're going to say, speak for your servant hears. When Samuel heard God say his name for the fourth time, Samuel understood that it was God speaking to him. He understood that it was God's calling for his life. And just like the verse that we read, it says, Now the Lord came and stood and called us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak for your servant hears. Amen. This is a wonderful thing. When God encounters us, it's a marvelous thing when God invites us to participate in his work, in his project. And in that moment, God invited Samuel And today, God is inviting you. The voice of God is to reveal to us a project that if we give our lives to this project, it's going to bring us to a path that's going to lead us to an eternal life with God. And if you hear this voice, you are going to continue to have struggles, but you are going to have one certainty that God is going to be with you at every instance. God is going to sustain you until the very end. And Samuel, he was called in that moment. The story of Samuel says that he was confronted. He was persecuted. He was a lot of times rejected. But we know one thing, that Samuel, he was called and he was honored. He was rewarded by God. And until the last time, And, and during this end time, those who are hearing the voice of God, we have to be like Samuel and say, God, speak for your servant hears. And Samuel was hearing God. And Samuel was hearing what God was saying, but at this last time where he answered God back, he was essentially saying, God, I am ready to complete this work that in which you have called me to do i am ready to offer my life to you to give my family into your hands and you trust in the lord amidst all other situations of your life because you understand that god has the best for you no matter if it's difficulties or victories you want what god wants for you And Samuel, he didn't ask, God, how is this going to be? What is it going to be? Who am I going to speak to? What, when am I going to speak? Is, is Israel going to accept me? And I ask Israel, did they accept the prophets? There was a certain time that Jesus, he cried over Israel. He lamented and he said that Israel kills the prophets and kills the ones that God sends to them, including Jesus. But blessed be the name of the Lord because Eli, he passed on his ministry to Samuel because Samuel was called. And we glorify God because Samuel was called and he was rejected just like everyone else by the nation. But he did what God needed him to do. He completed his ministry. And today, brethren, we are called to do God's, for God's ministry. And a lot of times people can reject us, can deny us, and we can be criti um, criticized. But we glorify God because we are doing what our mission is before God, what our calling is. And that tonight, may God give us this mentality. And the people that God has shown tonight, Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is talking in your heart. If you have any doubt, pray and consult the Bible. If the house, if the lamp in the house is going out, pray so that the Holy Spirit can be renewed in your life. Pray so that the voice of the Lord can be the only voice that you hear, that you hear in your life. And brethren, we know that Samuel... 
he was pros um, he was he had prosperity with God. Samuel he gives his life in order to complete this ministry for God, and God honored him. God rewarded him. And we know that there's going to be a lot of trials and difficulties, but the ones who trust in the Lord, God is going to honor us. Amen. Let's hear another song in this moment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We now invite everyone to be standing once again. We're going to hear a glorification to the name of the Lord. Lord, we glorify you for this beautiful word that you have given to us. We glorify you because a lot of people understood tonight you're calling for them. Lord, we glorify you for calling us to this ministry, to this work, and for revealing yourself to us. We glorify you for everything you have done for us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, we like to glorify you in this moment and praise your name because one day this work has been revealed in our hearts and we glorify you because hearing your voice we know that we will receive the victory 
And for this reason, we offer you all of our praise and all of our gratitude. We offer you this service of praise in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone can be seated. If anyone um, or those of you who are visiting us would like to receive a prayer, we are here to help you and to pray for you. Amen. Peace of the Lord.